let's be honest. I think we'd all be that guy yelling shit, 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 shit while running away from the alien. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2021 sci-fi action film, The Tomorrow War. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all that extra content. The Tomorrow War stars Chris Pratt, Yvonne Strahovski, and J.K. Simmons, and was directed by Chris McKay. It tells the story of Dan Forrester, played by Chris Pratt, who along with other Others from the year 2023 is drafted and sent through time to fight in a war against aliens in the year 2051. The Tomorrow War is a movie that I've been looking forward to for a few years now. It was originally scheduled for release last Christmas and actually made my most anticipated movies list at the start of both 2020 and 2021. After several delays and a sale to Amazon, it's finally arrived on streaming. And as much as I wish we had the opportunity to watch this on the big screen, I'm just glad that we've finally gotten it at all. Like quite a few of these other long delayed movies, I'll admit that my excitement for this one had waned a bit, and I didn't even watch it until it had been out for four days. But as I initially suspected, this movie is right up my alley. If you've been following my reviews for long, you know I'm a big fan of high concept sci-fi. Give me a really cool science fiction premise, especially one that involves time travel, and you've got me hooked. And that's exactly what this movie did. I gotta say, it's different from what I expected it to be years ago when all we had was the logline, but that's not a bad thing, and I really like what they did with the concept here. It leans into a lot of the things we know about time travel from movies, but does some clever stuff with it all. It addresses the issue of time paradoxes. It establishes a unique mechanism for the time travel. And perhaps most interestingly, it shows the present-day repercussions in a very believable way. Because the initial present day in the movie is basically our present day now, except they have time travelers from the future suddenly show up to tell them that there's a massive war against an alien species in the year 2051, and that humans are doomed unless they can recruit help from the past. Present. And so everything changes, but in a way that feels like how it would probably actually happen if that were to occur. Government and military responses, an international draft, a change in the general outlook on the future for people, especially younger people. And so this movie is a lot more than you might think. It's got a lot of sci-fi action, but there's also a lot of focus on family drama and relationships, the role of science, and the importance of preserving and safeguarding the future for younger generations. And because this movie took such an encompassing, wide approach, it actually had a far more well-balanced story than I expected. Especially after that trailer, I was kind of anticipating that this was going to be almost exclusively a sci-fi war action movie, with Chris Pratt mowing down aliens the whole time. And there are definitely some pretty intense action sequences, but there was a lot more character stuff than I expected, plus a lot more to the plot beyond just alien fighting. This film takes some time to set up the premise and establish its main characters. It's going to be close to 40 minutes before we actually get to the future, but I personally think the pacing worked really well. This is kind of a uniquely structured film, in the sense that it doesn't really follow the typical three-act structure. I mean, it's kind of there, and you could jam it into that, but this utilizes something much closer to a five-act structure. And that's a little weird at first when you're watching the movie, because even if you're someone who doesn't consciously think about the act structure of a film while you're watching it, or doesn't even know what I'm talking about when I say that, you do know how a movie usually flows. You can usually sense when something big is going to happen, or when a movie's going to be slowed down for an emotional beat, or when the movie's getting close to ending. By following a five-act structure, this movie sort of throws you off a bit, because it's not how a movie usually flows. It has some pretty abrupt transition points, both temporally and tonally. So when you're initially watching it, the pacing and structure might feel weird, but by the end, it all comes together. 
And I think this five act structure really worked for this movie because of just how much the story has to cover. So there's a lot to this movie, but I'd certainly be remiss not to talk about the action here since it still does make up a good chunk of the film. Sometimes straight to streaming movies can be a little wonky with big visual effects heavy action sequences, but that's not the case here. This movie's got some exciting and really good action. There are four big action set pieces and they're all pretty good in different ways. The first big sequence that takes place in Miami is my favorite of the four and it's intense. It's got some brutal action and some horror tinged tenseness, but there's also entertaining moments of levity that keep it all fun. I've also briefly got to talk about the visual effects, because they were far more impressive than I thought they were going to be. The time jump visuals were wicked cool, and the creature design was also really good. There was only a single moment towards the end of the movie where the CGI was a little iffy for me, but the rest of it looked really solid to me. The Tomorrow War is a big movie. It's got an enormous premise, big action, big ideas and themes. It spans multiple genres, including science fiction, action, war, comedy, and drama. It covers 30 years of time, providing us with a look at a dystopian war-ravaged future, as well as a surprisingly not too far-fetched alternate present. In the midst of all of this, it gives us two really heartfelt father-child relationships, spends a surprising amount of time focusing on biology, and also manages to deliver some really intriguing world-building all within an entirely self-contained original film that clocks in at just over two hours. It may not be a perfect movie, but it's a perfectly entertaining one. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. The first pro is definitely the premise. That's probably no surprise considering how much of a sucker I am for time travel and high concept sci-fi, but I love the setup and concept for this one. So many time travel movies involve one person or a small group of people intentionally developing a way to time travel. This movie explores what would happen if the concept of time travel was suddenly forced on the entire world, a world at the same technological point that we're at now. And not just time travel, but the knowledge that humans are going to be wiped out in 30 years unless something is done by people in the present. Not only is it all an interesting allegory for climate change, but it's a time travel story with an impressive amount of world building on both ends of the wormhole. Pro number two is the action. Even though this was released on Prime Video as a straight to streaming film, make no mistake, this is an action blockbuster. It's got a lot of other stuff too, but this movie's got some huge action sequences. And I gotta say, I really enjoyed them. It's this interesting mix between sci-fi action, horror action, and straight up war movie action. The precise mixture of those action varieties varies depending on which of the four big action set pieces you're talking about, which makes for continually engaging action, especially when paired up with the plot. Each of the big sequences brings something different to the table, but the initial Miami sequence was easily my favorite, with its ticking clock tension and horror uncertainty. The third pro is the structure of the film. So this is a pro that I wasn't really too sure of until I thought about it more after watching the movie. It has a unique structure, even beyond the obvious with the whole time travel thing. Most films follow a three-act structure. You get the initial introduction and set up in the first act, with some sort of plot catalyst at the very end where things drastically change for the main character. Then you move into the second act, where the bulk of the story takes place, and characters are usually trying to work towards some sort of goal. Typically at the end of the second act, we hit another big plot point, where the stakes are really high and the characters now realize the major final thing they need to overcome. Then the third act sees the big finale and climax before tapering off with the resolution. At first glance, this movie seems like it should fit into that three-act structure, because we have the present day, the future, and then back to the present day. And it sort of fits, but there are all these extra moments of high and low tension that we don't usually see. It follows more of an asymmetrical five-act structure than a traditional three-act structure. And so the movie doesn't quite flow the way you might expect it to. The setup is longer than you'd usually see for a movie like this, and there are a few moments later on where the movie feels like it's hit its climax and big finale, only for there to be another 45 minutes. Because rather than being in Act 3 of 3, you're really only in Act 4 of 5. So it's a little weird and will probably frustrate some people, but I think this structure and its associated pacing really worked for the story, because it needed to cover a ton of ground in a normal film length. 
and this shift in structure makes the film seem bigger than it is. On the con side, there are some minor issues that emerge as a result of the film structure that I was just talking about, but the only major issue for me was a bit of action fatigue. So I know that I put action in the prose already, so let me explain what I mean by this. I already mentioned that there were four big action set pieces that each do something slightly different. However, the second and especially the third sequence offer pretty much non-stop shooting because aliens are attacking, so there's a literal army of characters everywhere constantly firing their weapons. And it's one of those things that, at least for me personally, starts to get repetitive and counterintuitively boring, because it just devolves into a droning hail of bullets from nameless characters against an unceasing and constantly replaced enemy. I enjoyed the other things happening in those sequences, but the constant background firefight got a little tedious after a while. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying any of the films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give The Tomorrow War 4 out of 5 paws. It's got some nice action and a surprisingly broad story, but it's the incredibly cool premise and incorporation of its high concept sci-fi elements that bump it up to the four paw level for me. I would recommend The Tomorrow War to anybody looking for a sci-fi action movie. If you're somebody who likes high concept sci-fi, time travel, or aliens, this will probably be up your alley. There's plenty of Tomorrow War action to keep you entertained, but there's a lot more to the story than just the action and war stuff that was shown in the trailer. So if you're hoping for a film that's a little more well-rounded, I don't think you'll be disappointed, as long as you can accept the atypical story structure and let it all play out. If you liked The Tomorrow War, I would recommend Edge of Tomorrow. Beyond the title similarity, there are some similarities when it comes to the plot, revolving around a futuristic war against aliens. This movie also incorporates time in a unique way, though it's not quite a time travel movie. If you like the emotional beats of the story regarding the father-daughter relationship, you should check out Interstellar. It's another high-concept sci-fi film that plays around with time and also features a strong father-daughter relationship at its emotional core. And if you liked the science-y biology side of this and want another alien-ish sci-fi time-bending movie, you might want to watch Annihilation. It follows a small crew of scientists on an expedition into the unexplained shimmer and also features some really cool creature design. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen The Tomorrow War? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite time travel movie that isn't Back to the Future? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insider information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.